the question of this video is, is electric van life possible? And it turns out after doing months of research into this topic, it is an extremely complicated question. I do ultimately think it is the future of van life, but let's go ahead and walk through this logic in a ton more detail. So the first and biggest step here is choosing the proper electric vehicle. And if you do choose to go down this path, you're going to immediately notice that even on the used market, electric vehicles suitable for van life are extremely limited and expensive. So for example, the Chevy Bright Drop, even the Rivian uh, Amazon delivery van would be pretty solid choices, but they're simply cost prohibitive for most people. Essentially what I found here is that when it comes to electric vans, really your only option are used e-transits. Because for this vehicle, you can find used prices in the mid $20,000 range if you really look for it. But if you are seriously looking to do electric van life, I would strongly recommend expanding your horizons to electric pickup trucks. Because the simple reality in the US market is that the electric pickup truck market is much more developed than the corresponding electric van market. So here, not only do you have more options to choose from, but they also tend to be more capable than the corresponding electric vans. So we're talking things like dual motors, all wheel drive, heated seats, which is very important for electric vehicles. And perhaps the biggest difference is that electric pickup trucks tend to have much larger battery capacities than electric vans currently in the US market. Now let's talk more about the range, because when it comes to van life, the whole point of this lifestyle is to take advantage of going to more remote public lands like national forest and BLM lands. Now, luckily the charging networks in the United States are becoming pretty well developed and both the E-Transit and the F-150 Lightning do have access to Tesla supercharging network with this adapter. And I think this makes a huge difference for the feasibility of using an EV for van life. Now, I do want to give you guys a real world example that you might encounter with electric van life. So let's say, for example, you want to camp in this national forest just outside of Salt Lake City. If we search for public EV charging stations, we can see that around that BLM land, we do have a few options to choose from. But of course, within the national forest, there is no public EV chargers. So this means before going into the national forest, we have to top up, head in, find a camping spot, and then be able to get out of the national forest back to the charger once we are done camping at that location. And if we map this out, we can see that this particular charger is roughly 70 miles away from the camping location. So that means it's going to be 70 miles in, 70 miles out for a maximum minimum range required of 140 miles. And that is roughly what the E-Transit and the F-150 Lightning can achieve with proper driving characteristics. However, there is a pretty simple technique you could implement here to completely eliminate any kind of range anxiety, as well as giving you access to essentially unlimited power when out camping, allowing you to use electric heaters, electric cookers, and really anything else you want. And that's to make a simple DIY range extender for the vehicle, utilizing a 240 volt generator. Now, generally in van life, generators are pretty popular, but in this situation, we're gonna use the generator to exclusively burst charge the EV. And because we're using a 240 volt generator, this is a level two charger, and it's gonna be extremely effective at burst charging the EV and giving us meaningful amounts of power. So this right here are the three components you're gonna need a 240 volt inverter generator, a simple bonding plug, this is required for EVs. And then this right here is a veritable level two EV charger. Now this is a dual fuel generator, meaning that it can use either gasoline or propane. Personally, I would use propane, even though it generates a little bit less power. And in that scenario, we can set this veritable charger to 24 amps at 240 volts, giving us over 5.7 kilowatts per hour. And here, a pretty realistic scenario is that once you get to your camping location, you can pull out the generator and burst charge your EV for two hours, which would put over 10 kilowatt hours of extra capacity back into the battery. And both the Lightning and the E-Transit average about two miles per kilowatt hour. So that's an extra 20 miles off of a two hour burst charge. And also keep in mind, one of the huge advantages of EV van life is that the EV on top of being your vehicle is also your power station. So via this method of burst charging an EV and gaining 10 kilowatt hours of energy, 
This allows you to very easily run electric heaters, electric cookers, and really not have any electricity constraints like you do with regular gas vans. And a simple way of thinking about this is that instead of taking propane and directly burning it for heat, like a lot of van lifers do, we're gonna use that same propane in the generator to generate as much power as possible that is then stored in the EV battery. And because the EV is also a power station, we can then divvy out that power and use it any way we want. So I think with the proper planning and a few DIY solutions like a portable 240 volt DIY range extender, e-van life today is a real possibility. And in the future, as we get the next generation of EVs, this is only going to become more and more feasible. In fact, we already know that the next gen Lightning is going to have a built-in generator to act as a range extender. But definitely let us know your take in the comments below. And if you guys want to see more content on this, let me know. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one.